Hey everybody. So today we're going to talk about unlocking yourself. And it's something that, you know, I hear a lot of, which is like, I have the sound in me, but it's like, I don't know how to get that, my, my pure artistry, my unique sound, like find my lane. What is my sound? And, you know, here's something Shakespeare said, we are all born originals, but we all die copies. And so if you struggle to have your performances or your voice stand out from the crowd, or maybe you fear that you just don't know how to tap into what, what your sound is and all of what makes you an original artist, um, then you definitely want to uh, listen up to what we're talking about today. Um, so, okay, show of hands. Um, and you can just, you know, type in, yep, that's me, if you relate to this. I'm going to list a couple things to just sort of get you to start thinking about like some of the things that might be working you that you don't realize. So first thing, do you feel pressure to be or look a certain way that maybe you feel you don't in order to be a successful singer? Anybody relate to that? I know a lot of people where that kind of really gets in there. You know, I'm, I'm not interesting enough to be a, a pop star or I don't look the way a pop star looks or I don't look the way an opera singer looks or, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't, my lifestyle is not what people would think would be an opera singer or whatever. There's all these ideas and notions. So do you feel pressure to be a certain way or look a certain way that maybe you feel you don't in order to be a successful singer in your field? Do you feel pressure to have a specific kind of sound that you think you need in order to make it? You know, oh, you know, the, the sound that's in right now is X, Y, Z, and I don't sound like that. Or, you know whatever it is. Does that work you? Do you feel like you need to sing a certain specific genre in order to be successful? Because that's what's popular right now. Oh, you know, I do, you know, old school R&B soul. And like, that's just not what's on the radio. So like, I'm not going to be able to make it the way I want. Do, do, do you work in, does that get in there? How about this? Do you just feel like overall, you really just don't know what your sound is. Like maybe you're a really good parrot. You can make yourself sound like all these other people, but when it comes to what's what's your unique sound, you, you're at kind of a loss. Does that happen? And so first things first that I wanna, that I wanna tell you guys, and th this, is, this might sound really simple, but it is sort of the truth of all this, which is, you got to know who you are first. And, and so many of us, they, we think we do, but we don't. We know who we want to be. We know who we think we need to be, but that's often not actually who we are. And so if you're putting it on and if you're trying to be or look or sound like something that is not true to you or true to your voice because you have this limiting belief that you're not enough because of those things and you've got to be something else to be successful odds are it's going to sabotage you every step of the way and so vocally you're going to get into tons of bad habits trying to manipulate your sound which causes vocal fatigue and tension and can cause vocal injury and it just doesn't sound good because it's not true or it's not aligned because you're trying to make yourself sound like something else that you think you need to be to be successful so you're getting all up in there to try to do that, manipulating. And so it's not healthy and it contributes to tons of bad habits. It, when it comes to your performances, you know, if you're trying to be something you're not or be something you think you need to be because inherently what you have, you feel like is just not enough, it, it can come off as awkward. It can come off as trying too hard or, or just not interesting because it's not really you right? and it's not really true what's true for you and, and your sound. And by the way, guys, audiences, they can smell that stuff a mile away. Like if, if a singer is not 
interesting because they're trying to be something they're not or they're scared of being really who they are so they don't let themselves see be seen or they're trying too hard all these things like it's it audiences can smell it they really can and they'll come to one show and then they're not going to come back they'll buy one record and they're not going to pay to see you perform they're not going to come to see you again and so it affects the career and you may also have limiting beliefs around the, the idea of the career too of like you know what you think the industry wants you know and who you then have to be because well everybody has this right now and i don't have that so then i can't be successful but i'll tell you what you guys regardless of what part of the music industry you're in what the industry wants are original original people original ideas original sounds not more copies of what they already have you know we, we already have an adele we already have Josh Groban. We already have on an Atrebko, Bavarotti. We already have a John Legend. We don't need more of these, okay? Record labels and casting agents and people, they are looking for the next original star, not a copy of what they already have. And I got you know really good news for you where that's concerned. Who you are is so much more interesting to people than who you want to be or who you think you need to be, because when you are letting yourself really show and you're not scared of that, it's so much more interesting because it's real. And guys, audiences, they respond to real. Even if it's a heightened sense of real, you know, like think about Lady Gaga. You could say she's all artifice and, you know, she's all about like, you know, the, the, the costumes and the this and the hats and whatever, but the thing is, She's able to own all that stuff such hardcore and it's such a hardcore level because all of that is a very real part of her. You'd say the same thing about Freddie Mercury from Queen. So much artifice, but the reason why it works is because all of that is a very real part of who they are. It would never land with audiences otherwise. You know, when you think about Lady Gaga, her messaging is all about celebrating the weird and being unapologetically yourself and not caring what others think. And she totally walks the talk and we feel that from her. And so if you're not that and that's not you, then don't try to be that just because you think that's what's popular or that's what you have to be to get attention to be successful because that's what these other people have done, you know? And it all comes down to acceptance, which is you've got to see what is first before you can begin to tap in what is special about you. Before you can know what's special, you've got to see everything that's there. You've got to see all of you, the good, the bad, the flaws, everything. And then you put it all out there. So you've got to be vulnerable to do that. And that's what people pay to hear and see. You know, performers that are perfect are rarely interesting. You know, the ones who let us see all of them, they are interesting. And so you gotta allow people to see you, to really see you. But in order to do that, you gotta first get comfortable seeing yourself before you will ever be comfortable putting it all out there for everyone else to see. And so this is not just about your image, it's also about seeing who you are vocally. You know, like I was talking about before, so many artists, they come to me and they're great parrots. They can manipulate their voice to sound like Christina Aguilera or Adele or whoever, but it's a manipulation. It's not their organic sound. It's also not their healthiest sound because of all the manipulation they have to do to, to do that. And it gets them in trouble with vocal fatigue and vocal injury. But they're great parrots because they are not yet comfortable letting people hear them, their true sound. And they might have some limiting beliefs around why they are not enough and that's not enough. So we got to work some serious acceptance and flipping the script in their head so they can allow themselves to take the mask off and be truly themselves when they sing and feel confident enough to let that sound be, you know? So there's so many ways in which this manifests and it all comes down to allowing yourself to see yourself. Because when you don't let yourself truly see who you are without judgment, when you don't let yourself do that, then you start doing things that are not aligned with your physical instrument, with your talent, with what you really want to make that big impact with your voice. And so, you know, acceptance is the theme of the second module of my intensive program. And there's a reason 
why it's the second module and we do it right at the beginning because you've got to see what is first before you can start harnessing all that fuel towards your success. And so this is not a one-time thing, you guys. It's not like, okay, I'm going to take out my journal and I'm going to write what's special about me. I mean, it's a good start. Do it, right? But most of you have so many layers upon layers of defenses upon defenses that are built up guarding that most true part of yourself because of all that mindset stuff, the not enough stuff, the self-doubt, the what if I fail stuff, you know? And it takes some serious peeling away and some coaxing out. And if it didn't, you'd be singing with it already and you wouldn't be feeling how you're feeling. But it's a process of self-discovery and artistic discovery that leads you to sing and perform in a way that is totally aligned with who you are and what your unique instrument is built to do. And when you take that journey, not only is it healthier for your instrument, but then all the decisions you make for your training, your career, your larger artistic journey tend to align towards success. And that's what I want for you. That's why I guide singers into this work that merges the technical and the mindset, the thinking and the singing, because you need both. One is not enough. You need one to facilitate the other because I've seen too many talented singers give up because they couldn't make it because they didn't have this foundation. It's just too painful to know that you have talent and that you've been given a gift and know that you are not living that at the fullest expression of your talent and you have no idea what to do to change. It's too painful. And that's why most singers give up and then spend the rest of their lives in a very different kind of pain of wondering how it could have been different of wondering what else they could have done, of wondering what if they've been able to, to figure it out and stick with it. Guys, life is too short not to live your passion and your purpose. The coronavirus is a big fat reminder of that, that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. You got to do it now. And you may feel a little overwhelmed listening to all of this because it all feels very big to change. But I promise you, it's not. The singers that I work with in my program, they are doing this daily. So if you want my help to expedite this process and help you get there more quickly and more gracefully with this work, I would be honored to do so. Uh, book a call with me. Here is the link to do that. The call is for people who already have a lot of training, already have are out there, you know, auditioning and recording and hustling in their career and just not seeing the results of all of that in the form of the thriving career that they want. If you don't have technical training, if you've not worked for at least a year with an expert teacher, go get that first. This call is not for you yet. Okay. But if you have all that training and you're putting yourself out there and you're not seeing the results you want, don't overthink it. Book a call. Let's figure out what's going on. Get some clarity, get you sorted on a path to help you understand that there is a different way to train. So if all this is making sense to you and you want to hop on a call with me, um, it's totally free. Like I do this so that you guys understand there's another way to train, help you to understand what's been coming up, how we can shift it. And if working with me feels aligned to you, great. We'll talk about it. If not, that's okay too. The purpose of the call is clarity. Um, so I really hope that you guys can start to under, you know, let yourself see yourself, um, peel away those layers. And if you want the help to do that, be able to expedite it and do it faster and more gracefully, uh, book a call with me and we'll talk about what that looks like. All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into today's episode. If you wanna subscribe, click the link right over there that says subscribe. And if you wanna book a breakthrough session with me, which you absolutely should do, then click the link right over here that says book a call to schedule an appointment to speak with us. I'll see you on the next episode.